Hey guys, what's up? I just wanted to jump on here real quick and say Happy New Year. Um, I hope you guys were able to spend some time with your family and that you guys had a good holiday. I just wanted to say thank you guys for the past year, for anyone that took the time to watch my videos, subscribe, comment, and let me know what you guys think. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. So before I take any more of your time, let's go ahead and get into this video, guys. I'm gonna show you guys how I made the wall ball and the target. And I spent about $25 and about two and a half hours of actual work time. And it works out. It works great. So if you want to see how we did this, stick around and watch the video. All right, so I started by weighing the sand. Um, I was going for a 20 pound ball. So I weighed out 19 and a half pounds and I left a half pound for the extra stuff that's gonna wrap the sand. Next, I began to wrap it in saran wrap. Before I did that, I taped it with some packaging tape. Then I opened up the ball. This is the Wicked Big Soccer Ball. I think I paid $9 on Walmart. And I took out the plastic rubber inside. Next, I took the saran wrap sand and I wrapped it with stuffing from an old couch pillow that I had sitting around. I taped up that layer and proceeded to do another layer with the cushioning to make it a little bit bigger so that it would fit inside the, uh, the ball. Next, I just used tape. I ran out of saran wrap, so I just used packaging tape to seal that layer off, tape it all together. Next, I put it inside the ball. Picked up some twine and some large needles at Walmart and decided to sew the opening together. Excuse my sewing skills. I do not know how to sew. I just kind of figured it out as I went and tried to get as close to the ball as possible so that the fabric would fit tight. I did the first bottom layer just a straight line then I cut the top off the leftover then I took another piece and just did a loop over type of uh, stitch I guess I don't know what it's called but I just kind of went over and did a second um, stitch just to make sure that it won't open with all the uh, drops and the throws that this is gonna take All right, next we had a scrapped piece of plywood, two by two, and I measured out a distance of six inches from the edge and screwed in a small drywall screw in there, tied a rope and tied a pin to it to make a circle the same size all the way around. And I just drew the connecting piece and I took a jigsaw to cut it out. that was cut out I sanded it all down to get rid of any splinters any rough areas next I took another scrap piece of 1x6 and I cut out to fit behind the uh, circles I used some liquid nails to glue it down and some screws from the front to hold it even better level to draw a straight line between them and I made the two holes for the toggles that are going to hold the target up against the brick wall and here's what it looks like with the toggles ready to go next I'll just have to install the anchors into the center block 
decided I decided on this wall. I'm gonna measure nine and a half feet up so that one of the circles is 10 feet up and one of the circles is nine feet. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and drill a hole in the masonry and then use those um, toggles to hold it up there. So. All right, so I have my line marked up there and I'm just gonna use, you can use a little bit of caulking. I just have this liquid nails on here. I'm gonna put a dab on the end of the screws and I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna make my holes with that. All right guys, so I'm drilling into cinder block, so I'm gonna have to use a hammer drill. Um, if you're just in your garage or somewhere where you have wood studs, this is gonna be a lot easier for you. But I have cinder block to go through, so this is what I'm gonna use. All right, so we're using a half inch bit. Uh, and it seems like a really big hole, but we're using these fasteners. And so this metal whole metal part right here is gonna go inside the hole. Once it's in there, it'll expand. And if my hand was the wall, then you scoop this down, it'll clip up against the wall, and then your screw will go into that little plastic piece. Um, these are great for We've mounted TVs with this. You can mount up to, I believe, it's like 150 pounds per each one of these on just regular drywall. And we've done some TVs with the with these little flip toggles. These are pretty cool, man. They're good. So let's go ahead and make these holes. This is going to be probably the hardest part of the whole thing. All right. Well, that was easier than I thought. All right. I'm going to get you guys a close up of the uh putting the toggles in once this is tight on there you pull it as much as you can it will click try to get it as tight as possible and then you just break it off there you go and then once you put the toggle in there, it'll tighten up against that center block. All right, next I took some black spray paint that I had and I just sprayed the wood down. I just want something simple. Black is one of my favorite colors, so I sprayed it all down. I used the inside of a roll of tape to make a circle in the middle, but if you want, I mean, you can print out stencils to make the targets look cool, whatever you want to put on there. Next, we went ahead and hung up the target. We, the toggles were already in the wood. We just placed them in the anchors and screwed them in so they were tight up against the wall. All right, guys, we got it up. Unfortunately, when I went up to hang it, the screws that came with the uh, original toggles were a little bit too short. So luckily I had some here in the shop that were about a half inch longer and those were perfect for it, but we got it up and now it's just time to try it out. Five rounds of 10 wall balls 
and 25 jump rope. So, if you're looking something you can make at home to add to your home gym, here it is. See you guys next time.